class 12th chemistry we were discussing chapter coordination compounds and in this video we will discuss about bonding in coordination compounds with special reference to valency bond theory and magnetic properties of coordination compounds first come to the valency bond theory that is VVT the suitable number of atomic orbitals like S, P, D of central metal atom or ion hybridize to provide empty hybrid orbitals these hybrid orbitals accept lone pair of electrons from the ligands and are directed towards the ligand positions according to the geometry of the complex such as octahedral, tetrahedral, square planar, etc. When inner d orbitals that is n minus 1d orbitals are used in hybridization, the complex is called inner orbital or low spin or spin paired complex. When outer d orbitals, that is n d orbitals, are used in hybridization, the complex is called outer orbital or high spin or spin free complex. This table gives the relationship between coordination number, hybridization, and geometry. If coordination number is 4, hybridization may be sp3 or dspt, dsp2. If hybridization is sp3, geometry is tetrahedral and if hybridization is dsp2, geometry is square planar. This is the shape of tetrahedral and this is the shape of square planar. If coordination number is 5, hybridization is sp3d and geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. If coordination number is 6, hybridization may be sp3d2 or d2 sp3 and in both the case, the geometry is octahedral. This diagram represents the octahedral geometry. Now, let us see the some specific examples. First is hexaamine cobalt third. This is the formula of this compound. Atomic number of cobalt is 27. That's why its electronic configuration in neutral atom is 3D74S2. This is orbital notation of electronic configuration okay 3d and this is 4s and in this complex the oxidation state of cobalt is plus 3 how can we find out the oxidation state of cobalt 3 if name is written we can find out from this if formula is given then we can say suppose its oxidation state is x then this ns3 is neutral and sum of the oxidation state is equal to charge on this complex this is plus 3. That's why we can say x is equal to plus 3. The D configuration in CO3 plus becomes 3D6. Two electron from 4S and one electron from D is removed. Then we will get the 3D6. And these six electrons in the D subcell are present like this. Okay, they are the these are the paired electrons, and these four are the unpaired electrons. Now, in this case, hybridization is D2 sp3. As we have discussed, that hybridization is completely theoretical concept. And it was introduced to explain the bond parameter, geometry, and magnetic properties. Experiment says, experiment says that this complex is octahedral and diamagnetic in nature. To explain these properties, it is assumed that in the presence of NH3, which is a strong field ligand, the electrons in the d orbitals get paired. These electrons will get paired. In this way, these two d orbitals will vacant. These two d orbitals along with 1,4s and 3,4p orbitals undergo hybridization and they produce 6 d 2 sp 3 hybrid orbitals. And these hybrid orbitals occupy Low, uh, electrons from the NS3 molecule make a coordinate bond. Is that clear? That's why we can say in this complex, inner D orbitals, that is 3D, are used in hybridization. So the complex is called inner orbital or low spin or spin paired complex. And we can summarize its properties. Hybridization is D2 sp3. Geometry is octahedral. This is diamagnetic in nature because there is no unpaired electron. Come to the next one. This is hexafluorido cobalt 8 third. Again, central atom or ion is cobalt. Electronic configuration is 3D7 4S2. Now, again, in this complex, oxidation state of cobalt is plus 3. Okay, again, you can find out in the same way. Like this is cobalt, this is X, 
plus 6 fluoride ion. Each fluoride ion, uh, ion is negatively charged and this is equal to minus 3. If you solve it, we will get x is equal to plus 3. That's why this is again 3d6 and this is the orbital notation. Now in this complex, hybridization is sp3d2. How? Again, experiment says that it is octahedral and it is paramagnetic in nature. Okay, and its magnetic moment is equivalent to the four unpaired electron. To explain these observations, again it is assumed that in presence of F minus, which is a weak field ligand, these electrons will not get paired. That's why empty orbitals of the outermost shell, that is 4D orbitals, will take part in the hybridization. And hybridization is sp3d2. These hybrid orbitals get get the six pairs of electron from the six F minus ions. In this complex outer D orbitals, that is 4D orbitals are used in hybridization. So the complex is called an outer orbital or high spin or spin free complex. If we summarize the properties, hybridization is sp3D2, geometry is octahedral, this is paramagnetic due to the presence of four unpaired electrons. Next come to tetrachloridonucleate second. This is the structure. Now, atomic number of nickel is 28. That's why in neutral atom, electronic configuration is 3D8, 4S2. And in this case, oxidation state of nickel is plus 2. In plus 2, the D orbital configuration becomes 3D8. Okay. And these are the electronic electron distribution in the 3D subcell. Now, in this complex, hybridization is sp3. Again, it is assumed that in the presence of chloride ion, which is a weak field ligand, electrons of the d orbitals will remain unpaired. It will not, they will not get paired. That's why hybridization is sp3. And these four sp3 hybrid orbitals get the electrons from four chloride ion. Make a coordinate point. Now, this is a high spin complex. Why? Because electrons in 3d orbitals not get paired. And we can summarize its properties. Hybridization is sp3, geometry is tetrahedral, and this is paramagnetic in nature because two unpaired electrons are present. Another complex of nickel, this is tetracarbonyl nickel zero. We can say in this nickel is present in the zero oxidation state. Electronic configuration is 3d8. 4s2 and in this case again hybridization is sp3 again it is assumed that co carbonyl is a strong field ligand and in the presence of this ligand the electron from 4s are shift to 3d how actually in the presence of this ligand this these electrons will get paired one d orbital vacant and these two electrons will shift to this one in this way, this is 4s is vacant and 4s along with this 3, 4p orbitals undergo the hybridization and produce 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals. These 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals get 4 pairs of electron from 4 CO group. Clear? This is a low spin complex because electrons in 3d orbitals get paired. That's why we can say hybridization is sp3, this is tetrahedral and this is diamagnetic, diamagnetic in nature. There is no unpaired electron. Another complex of nickel, this is tetracyanidonucleate second. Electronic configuration in neutral atom of nickel 3d8 4s2 and this nickel is present in the plus 2 oxidation state. That's why electronic configuration is 3d8 and electrons are distributed like this. Again, to explain its diamagnetic nature and square planar structure, it is assumed that hybridization is dsp2. How dsp2? Actually, again, it is assumed that in the presence of Cn minus ion, which is a strong field ligand, these electrons get paired, and one of the d orbital remain vacant, and this d orbital along with this is 4s and 2 4p orbital will undergo dsp2 hybridization. And these four dsp2 hybrid orbitals get the electrons from cn minus groups and make a coordinate bond. Okay, this is a low spin complex because electrons in 3d orbitals get paired.
we can see hybridization is dsp2 geometry square planar and this is diamagnetic because there is no unpaired electrons now we have discussed about the three complexes of nickel now just this table indicates the summarization of whatever we have discussed this is the complex nicl42 minus oxidation state of nickel is plus 2 hybridization of nickel is sp3 this is tetrahedral this is paramagnetic this is high spin complex nico4 oxidation state of nickel is 0 hybridization is sp3 this is tetrahedral this is diamagnetic and this is low spin complex just see both complexes sp3 tetrahedral okay but one of them is paramagnetic and another one is diamagnetic you must be able to explain these features okay this is nicn42 minus oxidation state is plus 2 this is hybridization is dsp2 geometry is square planar this is diamagnetic and this is low spin complex actually this vbt can explain the magnetic properties of coordination compounds as we have discussed if any substance is diamagnetic it means there is no unpaired electrons all electrons are paired and in case of paramagnetic elect some electrons are present as a unpaired electrons these are the some coordination complex like this is mn cn63 minus oxidation state of mn is plus 3 and d electron configuration is 3d4 and there is a unpaired electrons are two this is paramagnetic in nature this is a inner orbital complex and hybridization is d2 sp3 okay fe cn63 minus oxidation state of fe is plus 3 this is 3 d5 species number of unpaired electron is one this is again paramagnetic this is inner orbital complex hybridization is d2 sp3 this is co c2 o4 3 3 minus oxidation state of cobalt is plus 3 and this is 3 d6 number of unpaired electrons zero this is diamagnetic this is an inner orbital complex and hybridization is d2 sp3 next one is this is mn cl6 3 minus in this oxidation state of mn is plus 3 and d electron 3d4 number of unpaired electron 4 this is paramagnetic this is outer orbital complex and hybridization is sp3d2 this is fe f6 3 minus oxidation state of fe is plus 3 electronic configuration is 3d5 of fe3 plus ion and number of unpaired electrons are 5 this is paramagnetic this is again outer orbital complex and hybridization is sp3d2 this is cof63 minus oxidation state of co is plus 3 configuration is 3d6 number of unpaired electrons are 4 this is paramagnetic in nature this is outer orbital complex and hybridization is sp3d2 clear limitations of valency bond theory it involves a number of assumptions we already discussed okay it does not give quantitative interpretation of magnetic data it does not explain the color exhibited by coordination compounds it does not give a quantitative interpretation of the thermodynamic or kinetic stabilities of coordination compounds it does not make exact prediction regarding the tetrahedral and square planar structures of four coordinate complexes it does not distinguish between weak and strong ligands okay student subscribe my channel to get the new videos of this chapter thank you